In this video, I'm going to recreate Minecraft in four different dimensions. So let's go to the first challenge, creating Minecraft in one dimension. The first step will be to create the terrain. For this, the terrain will be represented as a unidimensional grid of blocks. In each location in the grid will be set a probability of creating a pivot block. When a pivot block is created in a location, a random amount of adjacent blocks are created around the pivot block getting a result like this. Have also been added ores in random locations and puddles of water, randomly filling spaces between blocks separated from each other. And here is the final result. As this world has only one dimension, the player can only move left to right, and the trees are kind of funny. Maybe the graphics are not the best, but remember, this is only with RTX off. On to the next challenge, creating Minecraft in two dimensions. First step, create the terrain. This time the terrain will be represented as a bidimensional grid of blocks. To start, all locations below a certain height on the grid will be filled with blocks of dirt, so we have our first terrain. But you may have seen a problem. This terrain has no variation. It looks like it goes flat forever. To add variation in the terrain, a system called Gradient Noise will be used. If you don't know what it is, Gradient Noise is an algorithm for generating random numbers with smooth transitions. For example, this is a terrain generated with white noise, that is, random numbers, and this is a terrain generated with Gradient Noise that is, random numbers with smooth transitions. You can see that it looks more like a natural terrain, and that is what it is for. The gradient noise also will be used to create holes in the terrain that will be the caves. To create water, all empty positions below a certain height on the grid will be filled with blocks of water. And to create trees, in each block on the surface will be set a probability of creating a tree, that is basically a predefined pattern of four trunk blocks in vertical with leaf blocks around the top. And there we have it, Minecraft in two dimensions. Now things start to get a little more complicated, creating Minecraft in three dimensions. In three dimensions, it already starts to become impractical to draw all the blocks around the player all the time. For example, if the player is on the surface, usually, there are many blocks underground that the player cannot see, so it is a waste of processing to draw all these blocks since they are invisible anyway. The ideal is to draw only the faces of the blocks that can be seen by the player. It is also a good idea to aggregate blocks in groups called chunks. With this method, instead of the computer drawing each block one by one, which is very slow, the computer can draw the entire group of blocks at once, which is a lot faster. Now let's follow a similar implementation order as before. Creating a terrain of dirt blocks, creating variation with gradient noise, and creating caves, water, and trees. And there we have it. Minecraft in three dimensions. An interesting effect also was added when it comes to breaking blocks. The block unlocks and contracts to a small size and then falls to the ground, then it can be picked up. Finally, let's go to the final challenge, creating Minecraft in four dimensions. But what does Minecraft in four dimensions look like? If Minecraft in three dimensions has a direction representing left and right, a direction representing back and front, and a direction representing bottom and top, where is the other direction? 
The other direction will be implemented with a method inspired by a novella called Flatland. The idea is to draw only a lower dimensional slice of the world and allow displacement through the extra dimensions. This will be done by creating multiple three-dimensional chunks in the same location and switching in real-time which chunks are visible and which chunks are invisible, thus creating a kind of a four-dimensional chunk. And here is the final result. Inside the Minecraft in four dimensions, there are an infinite amount of blocks on a single chunk. Now some trivia will be shown about a Minecraft in four dimensions. First, let this block be broken and drop on the ground. If the player moves forward in the fourth dimension, the block disappears. And if the player moves backward in the fourth dimension, the block reappears. This is because, as explained before, the player only sees a three-dimensional slice of the four-dimensional world. So, to be able to see the block, the player must be in the same location as the block in the fourth dimension. Here's another example. At first glance, this location appears to contain no buildings. However, if the player moves in the fourth dimension, a house suddenly appears from nothing. As you can imagine, Playing Minecraft in 4 dimensions is even more complicated than playing Minecraft in 3 dimensions. For example, this house has walls in 3 dimensions, but it has no wall in the 4th dimension, which makes it possible to enter the house without opening the door. Like this. This means that a 4-dimensional mob could also enter this house without going through the door. Imagine you peacefully at your house and a creeper pops out of nowhere in front of you. To solve this problem, walls should be built at the two corners of the house in the 4th dimension, like this. This is a wall in the 4th dimension. If an entity is moving towards the house in the 4th dimension, it will crash into these blocks, preventing it from entering the house. What do you think about Minecraft in 4 dimensions? I think I would enjoy playing a full feature version of a game like this. Maybe even more than the 3 dimensional version. And that's it everyone, hope you enjoyed the video, goodbye.